If you know anything about biker culture, you've probably heard of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, one of the longest established and largest bike clubs in the world. If you know anything about the Hells Angels, you've probably also heard of Sonny Barger, one of the original founding members of the Oakland chapter, now seen as an elder statesman for Hells Angels worldwide. I've come down to Santa Pod Raceway to meet Sonny on one of his rare visits to the UK. Sonny, welcome to England. Um, I wonder if you'd tell us a little bit about how the club was originally formed and what aims you had in mind in those early days. Well, the club, I believe, was originally formed off of the name of uh, the Hells Angels Farmer Squadron, which was stationed right by here, I understand. And that happened in 1948, before my time. When I got in the club, uh, we formed the Oakland Charter and became part of the Hells Angels. Just looking for a club to ride with, a brotherhood, and having a good time riding motorcycles. I have this impression from reading the books and, and some of the things I've seen in the movies that you played a, key, played a key role in taking the club forward and developing it. Is that fair? I think I was instrumental in helping. It's, although the club was going for eight or nine years before I got in it, they never really had the notoriety they had until, well, I should say the notoriety started after I got in the club. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, you must have seen lots of changes over the years you've, um, since you've been riding bikes. What do you say is the biggest difference to life on bikes now to what it was in, in your early days? Well, you can ride in much further distances. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, like in the 50s, if you got 300 miles a day, you really were doing well. Today, it's nothing to get a thousand. And that's because of breakdowns, is it? And better yeah, reliability? And, uh, rigid frames. Right. It must have been pretty uncomfortable riding around on those rigid things. Well, we didn't know it. <laughs> I believe you also appeared in a movie acting alongside Jack Nicholson. Well, we did, and you know, I mean, this is going to sound funny, but we didn't act alongside of Jack. At that time, Jack Nicholson was in a movie with us. Right. That was his first movie. He wasn't a star, and we were the stars, and he was working in our movie. Looking at the books, lots of famous names crop up, particularly in your autobiography. Um, names like Allen Ginsberg and Hunter Thompson and the Rolling Stones. Um, as a survivor of the 60s, how do you regard some of those people now? Some of them I still see, some of them I like, some of them I didn't like. Some of them I don't even talk to today. In the new book, um, there's um, the reference to Steve McQueen. And uh, David Crosby of Crosby, Stills and Nash. Well, Steve McQueen, I never did know as a person, you know, not on a one-on-one -on -one basis. The information to write the story came from his wife, Barbara, and all the photos that were in there. So I never did meet him in person. Oh. Now, Crosby, uh, yeah, we knew him. He was a character. He was a good guy. Yeah? Would you like to say a bit more about that? I sure would love to hear what, what, what he got up to. No, he's, he's had enough problems. He didn't need any with me talking about what I know about. Have Harley Davidson Motor Company asked you to join in their centenary celebrations next year? Harley Davidson would rather even ride their motorcycle, let really? alone come to one of their uh, functions. But as, as such a famous figure, you must have brought some great publicity to the brand. Well, I think the thing of it is the infamous, not famous.